the build I'm currently running in Grandmaster content is absurd for eliminating high priority targets on the battlefield lightning fast. So this includes, you know, champions, mini bosses, oh, yellow bars, and more. Jeez, <laughs> look at that, this is insane damage. A lot of rooms have these big enemies that show up. They basically throw off your entire strategy because they dish out so much damage that they can one-shot you in Grandmaster difficulty. But they're also super tanky, so you can't take them out too quickly. Now, usually between 160 and uh, 280,000 HP, depending on what combatant it is. It's just missiles freaking chew them up. I love it. Uh, well, the build that I'm using takes them from like full health to zero in no time. It's with the push of a button and their HP gets destroyed. And the cooldown on this ability is like roughly 14 seconds, so I can really spam it and it's ready for absolutely any new threat rapidly. This build is very easy to set up too, and it's really versatile. So you can swap in and out weapons depending on what kinds of champions you need to deal with. But the basic setup that I'm running here has uh, all three champions covered in some way, shape, or form. As you probably figured out from the gameplay, uh, we're gonna be rocking the Hazardous Propulsion chest piece on the Titans, a new exotic. I know Titans have been, uh, well, they've kind of been memed a lot in the Final Shape content. You know, I think there was only like one Titan in the first 24 hour clears of the, uh, of the new raid. Uh, jokes about Titans being useless in the raids and whatnot. I mean, I gotta tell you, you're gonna be really happy that you've got a Hazardous Propulsion Titan for a teammate in the new raid if you're doing master challenge runs or master raids they demolish subjugators they immediately delete the mini bosses in the second encounter like the ogre phalanx and wizard and in verity they can instantly deal with the ogres both inside and outside but circling back to gms our focus here is definitely to be able to deal with the champions so i've got anti-barrier pulse covered with the uh, graviton lance here since there's a lot of void shields in this week's grandmaster nightfall I've got Unstoppable Sidearm covered with The Call Rocket Sidearm. Mine has Lead from Gold and One for All for general ad clear and solid ammo economy. And I'm running Suppressor Grenades for overloads if I'm in an activity that has them, though this week's Grandmaster doesn't. But you can still use the grenade to suppress the various Lucent Hive mini bosses as well because some of their supers can be uh, a real pain. I'm using Frenzied Blade as I rely on that a lot in this GM for survivability. Like a lot of these rooms are chaos and especially the last room where there's no real cover to just, you know, hang out at. So I need to be moving around the room at all times and that tormentor Johnny Bravo looking jerk runs you down so fast if you aren't paying attention. Oh, he's hungry! He's so hungry! Oh, bro is so thirsty for my booty. Of course, we're using Drenger's Lash here as our primary aspect with a barricade to suspend champs and uh, other big targets. I use the Rally Barricade for the rapid cooldown and the ability to stand behind it and melt the suspended targets. But uh, you can run Towering if you want, provides more cover, and that can be really useful as well, especially in the uh, second room of this encounter when you have the Axion darts from the Phalanxes that are flying around, or Centurions. You've got the uh, Sniper Hobgoblins that uh, do big damage as well. So the Towering Barricade is not a bad call either. You'll just have to deal with a longer cooldown on it, not the end of the world. The idea here is that we're storing up six rockets in our exotic chest piece, which is really, really easy to do. Kills, precision hits, all of those things, charge up rockets and store them in your chest piece. A lot of times you'll actually charge up the rockets while you're priming a champion anyway, like a barrier champion, you're just you're peppering them down to about 80% HP so that they'll pop their shields. A lot of times you'll charge up, you know, three more rockets just by doing that alone. We stun them, we charge them, we drop the barricade, and then we watch as, you know, something like 122,000 damage gets dumped on them while they're suspended. You, know, you couple that with a little primary team fire, that champion is never coming back down alive. You cook them. Oh, hi. Get strung up, nerd. It's basically half of their HP, depending on uh, you know what the enemy is. It's like half of their HP in just one attack alone, in a single a fraction of a second. Champs and GMs have, you know, I think it's like 5,475 HP with a multiplier at power cap. I think it's just over 26 times. 
I think uh, someone did the math. I think Mossy, uh, Mossy Max on Twitter was saying that they they have around. I think it depends. It could be like two hundred sixty thousand HP, you know, something like that. So if we're doing one hundred twenty two with just the rockets alone, not to mention all the other damage we're dishing out with our weapons while we're doing it, I mean it's like they get cooked. But outside of champions, just the mini bosses alone, you know, you got the uh, the seal holders that block your um, you know your progression in the first main room of this GM, and they just get immediately deleted by this thing. Just no HP left. For your other aspect, I recommend running Diamond Lance. You know, I was playing around with Unbreakable to test it out in GMs, and I was I was just kind of whelmed. You know, it's not great, not terrible. Uh, Diamond Lance will give you more assets on the field for crowd control, so I would just stick with that, though. I'll hover over my fragments really quickly here so you can see and copy those as well if you want. And I'll definitely include a, uh, a dim link in the description and pinned comment too. So if you just want to click that, head over there and check that out. You're more than welcome to do that as well. But at the end of the day, you know, this build gives you a clear purpose in GM content. So your job is to help eliminate high priority targets quickly so that your teammates can breathe and focus on clearing the room or executing mechanics. You're the team's sentinel, their protector. You're going to run out there. You're going to tank all that aggro from the, from the big guy so that they don't have to. And with this build, you'll be able to do that with, with every big target that comes your way because it is such a rapid cooldown on the ability to do this. Quick note on my stat allocation because I know people will ask. I've got 30 mobility, 100 resilience, 51 recovery, 60 discipline, 51 intellect, and 100 strength. That's just what I prioritize here. Max resilience, obviously, and uh, max strength for lots of mobility on the battlefield with Frenzied Blade. And then a fair amount of discipline and moderate intellect and recovery. Those are the things that I prioritize in that order. Otherwise, we're still not terrible at general ad clear either between the weapons in the build as well. You know, the call, it chews through ads, and I've got the one for all on us as I'm tagging multiple opponents. It's getting a damage buff. It's also getting another damage buff anytime I use the hazardous propulsion because you get a buff to your rocket damage, and these rocket sidearms are affected by that. The Graviton Lance is good for trash mobs. The machine gun with destabilizing rounds uh, makes a lot of clustered void shielded combatants die very quickly. So we're basically completely set with all of our bases covered. So I highly encourage you, you know, get yourself a hazardous propulsion for your Titan. I've tried a lot of different Titan builds this season, and uh, this is the one that I always come back to, and for good reason, especially in the raid. It's versatile, but it also has a clear purpose and it excels at it, and I dig that. Thanks for watching the video today. Let me know if you try Hazardous Propulsion out in endgame PvE content and what you think of it as well. If you enjoyed the video, let me know by leaving a like as it's the best free way to support the content right here on YouTube, and subscribe for additional Destiny 2 content. Be warm and well-fed, my friends, and I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.